Hello friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Jennifer and I am a hot mess on a mission. If you've known me for very long, you know I'm, I'm kind of food obsessed. I am so excited because in the month of September, I'm going to be posting videos, hopefully every day, um, that somehow address some kind of special eating need, whether it is a medical condition or just a life situation that makes it difficult to eat healthy or to even eat at all. And today, my video is going to be focusing on trimmers. Now, um, my dad is the inspiration for today's video because he has an essential trimmer. And an essential trimmer is basically a trimmer that happens when you're trying to do something. If you're just sitting still, you don't have a trimmer. But if you try to take a drink, all of a sudden you're shaking. If you're trying to eat, you're suddenly shaking. And so I want to talk about some solutions for people who have those trimmers. Now, I want to I want to address a couple of different things because number one, there can be different situations that cause tremors. And one of those is a vitamin deficiency. One of the vitamin deficiencies is B12. So if you happen to have the MTHFR gene mutation and know that you may have issues with B12 and you have a tremor, you may wanna look into that further and have your B12 tested. B1, B6, and B12 can all be associated, the deficiencies can all be associated with trimmers and again there are other causes and a lot of times they don't know what causes the essential trimmer and at that point you really want to focus on just making eating easier okay so number one even if you don't want to do all the testing and all that b12 and other B vitamins are only found in animal products. You can, they're in milk, they're in seafood, they're in meat, especially livers, they're in eggs. So if you're wanting to boost your B12, eating those types of things will help if it is related to a B12 deficiency. Those are things that provide your B vitamins, especially B12, okay? Now, the other side of that is if you don't know what's causing it, and for example, with my dad, he's an older man, he has his certain foods that he likes to eat, and he's not necessarily interested in eating a healthy diet, okay? At this point, this is where we kind of pick our battles. Sometimes it's, it's appropriate to really hone in on nutrient-dense foods, um, and sometimes, the appropriate thing is just to give them something that they'll enjoy because it's at this point like it's if you know my dad he has dementia he also has a trimmer and i thought you guys i thought that his trimmer may have faded because of just the um the progression of alzheimer's he has alzheimer's and i thought just the progression of the disease may have caused him to not have tremors anymore um but today i went to visit him and i was giving him a drink and um, he drinks her straw and so i was giving him a drink from a shake and he tried to hold it and it was a flimsy cup i don't know why they gave him a flimsy cup like that but he started squeezing it and he started shaking so i was like okay he does still have it so if i'm going to bring him food it's a good idea to bring him something that he can hold in his hand now before i get started with today's recipe which is something that my dad really enjoyed which is a hand pie um and hand pies you guys i became obsessed with hand pies for a while because it was something he could hold in his hand and eat um and so other things that we gave him that were kind of protein rich were um protein bars and let me let me okay I'm so excited y'all. Let me talk first before I get so focused on food. Let me talk about some of the accommodations that there are that you can use at home with someone with an essential trimmer that can help the whole eating experience. And I'll leave links to everything down in the, um, in the description, okay? So there are some spoons that you can use. You, there are weighted spoons that because of the weight of it, it just helps steady the hand. And um, there are these really cool spoons, but these are expensive. There are these really cool spoons that when you hold them, it's almost like a bobble head mechanism in there. So that even if your hand is shaking, the spoon itself is not shaking. Um, 
there are one of the things that we did was um you can go to walmart or again online i'll i'll put an amazon link below you know the the plates and bowls for kids that suction cup and the thing is they suction cup down to the table but you can just barely touch them in the right spot on this little thing and they come loose so it's not hard to get them loose when you need to but that suction cup made it and they're they have lipped sides which helps with toddlers as well but they have like even the plates you know they're kind of lipped and they have sections so that gives something not only does it keep the plate in place so the trimmers aren't like making the bowl scoot around or the plate scoot around but it also gives it a wall to stop against to scoop something onto their spoon or fork okay now having said that eating with this spoon certain things are going to be very difficult for someone with trimmers and so you're not going to want to feed them like peas and corn and things like that unless you mash them up in some mashed potatoes and that makes them stick better or maybe some kind of thick gravy if they like that so that it all stays on the spoon um mashed potatoes are something that would be easy to eat for breakfast um eating a thicker oatmeal that will stay on the spoon is going to be easier than them trying to use a spoon to eat say eggs for example like scrambled eggs because they're going to fall off now it may be easier to eat with a fork because you can poke the food and if the food will stay on it even mashed potatoes you know if you can get something on the thick on the fork that will stay on there that's going to be easier um so foods that you can like poke with a fork um even though you may have to help poke and um, that can be an example of something that would work for someone with trimmers you're going to want to really accommodate and and you know cut down on the frustration whether it's their plates moving around or them not being able um to keep the food on the spoon as they're getting it to their mouth um also as far as drinks go you really want to use drinks with lids and a spoon if they are spoon straw <laughs> lids and straws that my dad has used nothing but lids and straws for as long as I can remember, long before Alzheimer's set in because of the trimmer. And so some people say only fill the cup half full if, if they're not gonna drink with a straw, I guess. Um, but if the cup is only half full, that means, especially if it's a grown man who, you know, constantly, we're in the South, it's hot, we constantly are having some tea or something, you know. And so it, he never, he didn't have a problem with spilling it as long as there was a lid and he was drinking from a straw and you know everybody is using those these days you know the the metal insulated cups with a lid on top um and so that is something that will help as far as with drinking um now today like i said i became obsessed with hand pies you can make hand pies sweet or savory um and and i'm making mine super simple today and the only thing that you know you might want to adjust because again this is pick your battles okay um you can make a um a if like if you're trying to go low carb you can make a hand pie out of um, fat head dough okay my dad is near 80 years old and he's not gonna want to eat fat head dough <laughs> He's going to want just old-fashioned canned biscuits. If you want to do homemade biscuits and use that to make your hand pie, fabulous. But I'm picking my battle. And today's battle is just making something that he will eat. Now, to be fair or to be transparent, I'm giving these to my mom because um, my dad is actually to the point where he's probably not even able to eat a hand pie. He might. I might take one to him and see how... He does with it one day um but if you wanted to do kind of a one-two punch and uh not only give him something that is easy or her give them something that is easy to hold because they do, just do so much better holding and eating stuff like hamburgers hot dogs but you know there's not a lot of nutrition in hamburgers and hot dogs and so if you wanted to make a hand pie and put 
kind of a thickened version of is it goulash or vegetables fresh vegetables from your garden in some kind of tomato sauce um, if you just wanted to make like you know a beef stew mix um, and then just have a thick gravy to kind of because in this recipe y'all I'm doing a chicken pot pie hand pie and I'm just using sweet uh, why did I say sweetened condensed milk I'm using condensed cream of chicken I'm not going to dilute it at all and um, so the flavor will be intense or you know it needs to be intense um, but it's not going to be soupy and so you could probably do like beef because that B12 is in beef or beef liver you know grind some of that up mix it with the beef and then add like a cream of mushroom soup to it with some potatoes and carrots that sounds really good to me other than the cream of mushroom because I don't really care for it but I know a lot of people do and so anyway so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna make a hand pie and like I said you can put nutrient dense um, things that they enjoy or that they will eat you can make them sweet you could put fruit in there like a pie filling um I would avoid sugar but here's here's something else that I'm just gonna keep talking while I start rolling these out okay because there's I also want to mention oh man well I'm just I forgot let me see when you cook these you're actually going to cook them at whatever the directions say for the biscuit okay let me scoot you over this a little bit a little bit over this the way y'all um and i'm gonna put put it down here we're gonna get to rolling this out all you're gonna need um those regular sauce cans of condensed cream of chicken carrots potatoes and peas a can of like the home style these are grands but you know the off-brand grands i usually use off-brand but my local store didn't have off brand and then a can because I'm you know keep it simple if you want to use chicken from a rotisserie or whatever you can you can do that I'm using this is a 12 and a half ounce can of chunk chicken everything is drained and the cream of chicken is undiluted okay because we're making a relatively dry mix I guess the first thing I really need to do before before I start rolling them out um they freeze well and i would i would recommend um i would recommend that you reheat them in the oven or a toaster oven or an air fryer um but if you need to microwave them in a microwave that i mean microwave if you need to heat them up in a microwave that will work just fine because that's how my mom always heated them up for her and my daddy when I made it for them okay so we're just going to add all of this together and it's that simple there we go it is that simple as emptying cans now if you've got stuff that you grew in your own garden and you've got those put up in your pantry I would I would guess that would probably be a, a pint's worth you'd probably be able to make more than I'm making um y'all got stuff on me but all you got to do is dump it all together stir it and then let me see what I can the best thing to stir it with in here that'll work no it won't because I need some okay, I'm gonna use a smaller one because I need to get out get my chicken out okay so I've got all our candles goes out of the way. and what I usually do I just sling that out on the counter after I get it mixed up, I use an ice cream scoop to get kind of the right uh, portion because I'm kind of, I, I tend to add too much. And when you're done, this is enough to make all of these, use all of these, and you're probably going to have a little bit left if you just want to leave it in the um refrigerator and then just bring it out and eat it with a spoon okay that one looks like an empty so i'm gonna see that one okay so you just start up good make sure you break up your chicken because your chicken kind of i probably should have put my chicken in there first and broke it up before i added everything else but you know what who cares all right guys so i don't know at what point my 
camera died. So this is what it looks like. This is the consistency when it is all mixed together. Um, and now I am just going to roll out. I'll show you how I do one and then um, I'll make you watch me do the rest of them. We're gonna put down a little bit of flour so they don't stick. But I don't wanna put too much flour, okay? And after I roll them out, and seal them up, I will moisten the sides. Flip them. And I try to make them pretty thin, but if I make them too thin, um, can you see that? If I make them too thin, they tend to just be a little weak, so I don't wanna make them too thin. This is probably about the last time Okay, that's as thin as I'm gonna make them. I'm gonna use my ice cream scoop. You know, might get a little extra. That. You guys, I mean, that doesn't look like that much, but it really is. If I put it too much in there, I might put a little. Okay, that's a scoop and a half, and I bet that's too much. <laughs> oh, and now I need a, I need a bowl of water, and that is, that is just to moisten my hand so that I can wet the outside so the biscuit will stick to itself and then um you can add if you want it to be pretty like i've got pictures of them on facebook that i've made before and they look so fancy schmancy i don't think they looked i think my sister i didn't take a picture of them but my sister did because she thought they looked so fancy so it was after they'd been in the refrigerator oh yeah see that's too much that's too much i put let me take half part of that out I told y'all, one scoop is enough. I tried to say, now nah, I'll put more this time. Nope. Okay, I gotta get something to wipe my hands with now. All right. So only one scoop. Okay, see that worked just fine. And you can, you can crimp it with a fork. You can kind of roll it like this. I usually roll it. Um, it doesn't really matter however you want to do it, however you want to do it, okay? If you don't have time, I don't usually have time either, um, I'm doing this one. And I do this, and then if you want it to be, like when, when you take it out of the oven, if you want it to be pretty and shiny, you can do an egg wash. Or after you, before you put it in the oven. Um, or you can just add butter to the top after it comes out. Or leave it like it is, Okay? So that's the first one. Okay, and I'm gonna put these um, in my toaster oven at the temperature. And, and listen, if you're using, if your toast, not toaster oven, my air fryer, if your air fryer is like mine, we do a lower temperature for a shorter period of time. So I'm just gonna say now, cook them in the oven um, at the temperature recommended, or the time and the temperature recommended for the biscuits, and that should be plenty. So I will be back. When I get them all finished. Okay, well, um, I don't, y'all, I don't know why I decided to wear black while I'm working with flour, but um, I wanted to tell you too that there's something called caprylic acid, and it is in coconut oil, and um, I think it may be in human breast milk as well. But caprylic acid, um, it has shown promise. Apparently, there is some research out there that shows that um, it can reduce tremors, potentially. Um, and so that is something else to think about. I actually put coconut oil in my coffee every morning um, because it does have a lot of um, health benefits. And so this is a caprylic acid that I'm talking about that could help with tremors that is in fact in coconut oil. So just something else to think about and I'll be back when I'm done with this. Okay, so this is the last one and kind of what I've gleaned from making the first seven is that number one, when you put your scoop in, put it in the middle. Using one of these to add, put your water around the edges makes it a lot easier. 
and then you just pull it around and touch it down and what i usually do is kind of line it up and then i mash it flat a little bit to spread it out a little bit um and i'm just using you should probably oh and that's my oven preheated to 375 um i didn't look to see how long i'm supposed to cook it but i did see 375 so i'm going to put these in here now um, and because these are butter flavored and you can kind of see all of the specks, maybe you can see all the specks of butter in there. Um, I am not going to add an egg wash. Okay, so I'm going to put them in the oven at 375 for, let me, let me see what my biscuit can said. 375 for 11 to 15 minutes. I am not going to put an egg wash on them. Get these all on that. One of them, one of them ended up a little wonky, but that's okay. It tastes the same, y'all. It tastes the same. I'm gonna pick my battles. Okay, so I was gonna, I was gonna show you this minus my spoon. That's how much is left. So honestly, that's enough to make two tubes of biscuits. So a total of sixteen. And again, they freeze really well. Um, but I only bought one can, so I'm only going to do eight and this I will just, um, put in a container and take to my mother and, you know, she can just eat it like stew if she wants to, um, because she does not have tremors. So anyway, that's that. And I'll be back as soon as they come out of the oven. All right, folks. So, um, they're out of the oven. I cooked them probably... A little longer than 13 minutes it said 11 to 13 minutes but they weren't getting brown probably because of the filling so i went ahead and just kept an eye on them and let them cook a little longer here are these but here are the pretty i saved the prettiest ones over here y'all i'm gonna hold on to them so they don't slide in the floor or josie's gonna get them and these are not for josie these are for my mom so anyway this is what they look like and i'm gonna look at the bottom okay the bottom looks and you know, nice golden brown delicious, if you can hear them. Has a real nice crispy texture, I mean, at least around the edges. Um, but I wanted to tell you, number one, y'all, I don't know, why did I, why did I decide? You can't even see it. You can't even, can you see it? Like, why did I wear black to do this? I don't know. But I also wanted to tell you um, one more thing. Um, as far as trimmers go, something that can increase trimmers um, is caffeine. I know. Um, and they say that um, you should cut out alcohol use. However, there's also some um, studies that actually led to the caprylic acid study that talked about noticing that consuming alcohol can reduce tremors. Well, the um, what they found out was that it was what was the alcohol was breaking down into was an acid that is the same as caprylic acid. There's another name for it. Um, and so they started looking at caprylic acid because obviously you don't want to be drinking all the time trying to control your tremors. That's a bad idea. Um, 10 out of 10 do not recommend. But I've also known some people who would have a beer like before, um, before a meal because that would calm the tremors enough to help them eat more easily. That's something that you have to talk to your doctor about because alcohol mixes with other medications and a lot of times if you have tremors you may have other health conditions and medications and you don't want to mix things up that don't need to be mixed up so that's you know and again i am not a doctor i am not a nurse i am i am a you know y'all i heard this term the other day and i was like oh that's me. I am a citizen scientist. You know, we have so much information at the tips of our fingers these days with our computers and our phones. We can learn so much. It's just like the information is out there. You just have to take the time to look. And I know most people just don't have the time. And, and research is one of those things that I absolutely love. So if there is a topic that you're wanting more information on, whether it's a medical condition or anything, um, you know, if you're a nursing mom and you just need quick, easy snacks that you can get to quickly, that don't have to be refrigerated, so you can keep them right beside your rocking chair or your recliner or whatever it is where you're taking care of your baby, you know, let me know because I'm going to be making videos all September to fix those little problems we have, whether it's having tremors or tomorrow's video is going to be about dry mouth. 
Um, there's going to be some of you guys, believe it or not, there is there there are special needs for the ADHD brain, whether it's nutritional needs. And that's something I wanted to tell you too. Some of these things, um, as I'm going through this series, there I'm going to give you information on nutritional needs, like with um, trimmers, looking at the B vitamins and eating primarily meats, whether it's seafood, beef, livers, things like that, to up your B12, so that could possibly help with the tremors. Um, and so there's that nutritional side, but then there's also that just pragmatic side, side, side. We just need something they can hold without dropping or shaking or spilling. Um, and so that was something that I wanted to include today. And like I said, this is just an idea, take it and run. Whatever kind of hand pie you want to create for your loved one, put their favorite things in there that they may not be able to eat. Like, like a breakfast hand pie. Maybe they can't eat eggs and things like that. But if you mix up sausage and egg and cheese and, you know, stuff like that that they enjoy. Hash browns even. You can brown up some hash browns. Mmm. Anyway, mix all that stuff together and put it in a hand pie. Not a whole lot of it, y'all. Because it will overflow. But put it in a hand pie and then they can hold it and eat it. And if you're concerned about the bread or processed foods because this was store-bought, again, you know, you could you could use a homemade bread or biscuit recipe or, you know, you can use a um, fathead dough that's keto-friendly. You do what you need to do to meet your needs. This is just, I'm just giving you like a jumping off point um, and I want you to run with it. One of the things, another, here's a freebie for today, another one of the things that I did for my dad um, because number one, he likes sweet, so you might try this for a toddler even. Um, just somebody that doesn't have a steady hand that may be a little clumsy or it's not gonna be, be a big deal if they drop it. Um, breakfast cookies and I'll probably do a, a video for those later um, or sooner because breakfast cookies are one of those things that is hand held. Um, other things like fruit and um, bananas. My dad loved bananas. He ate bananas constantly. He loves bananas. So just things that they can hold in their hand um, and it's not going to be a big deal for them to drop. And, and the messier the less good, you know. Um, my daddy loved him some Sonic burgers, but they would slide and stuff would be falling off. You know, he could hold it in his hand, but you know, it was messy and that, that can cause a whole new set of issues. So, on that note, I'm gonna leave, please ask any questions you have down below. If there is a certain situation or like, if you have a picky eater, if you have, you know, any kind of situation where you're wanting more information on dietary needs, whether it's accommodations or nutritional information, um, please leave it in the comments below and I will do everything I can to help you out. So on that note, this is Jennifer. I love you guys and I will talk to you soon. Bye y'all.